the most frequent question we get when we go abroad is uh, how come there are so many writers and artists in Iceland? How can you produce so much? And uh, it's a difficult question. It's, um, we have no clear answers, but my only possible answer has always been that Iceland is a quite a special country and it's quite creative in a way. And Iceland keeps us creative because every 10 years we have a volcanic eruption, we have new mountains, a new lava field, and we have to find a name for it. So the, the country keeps us creative in a way. One of the things with Icelandic literature is that you're always working with this medieval language. Of course, a little bit changed, but not that much, and constantly renewed with new words. But an Icelandic author is always working with the fact that writing is the only constant cultural activity that we have had in this country. So Iceland is the last country in Europe to be settled by man. This takes place in the 9th century. People come in the thousands from Scandinavia and from the British Isles. And we are the only country that have stories from these times. And in the 12th, 13th centuries, these were written down. And this uh, vast uh, treasure chest of Icelandic sagas is what I use to uh, write my stories. One of the things that defines Icelandic uh, culture and existence is the fact that we are on an island up north in the Atlantic. At first, you would think, oh, it means isolation. but. For an islander, the ocean isn't only a wall, it is also a road. The Icelandic book market is quite special in some ways. Like, obviously, it's really tiny with a population of 300,000 people. But this can have its advantages. And I think it's uh, uh, probably in many ways easier for an author to make his voice heard in such a small community. Like, you can expect quite some reviews even if you're publishing your first novel. And uh, we have this very nice tradition before Christmas because in Iceland most books are published like from October until December. And we call them the Christmas books because we give them as Christmas presents. I try to, to come here every day uh, when I'm in Iceland. I go to the beach the, the, to walk in the, in the black volcanic sand and I'm most often alone, so I get to, to make the first steps of each day. And then the sea washes it away, and then you come again the next day, and it's a kind of a, a renewal. It's a bit like Iceland, like someone said, like a newborn naked baby. Yeah, Iceland is, is like a human laboratory. That is, you just leave 300,000 people on an island and see what happens. And the forces that are interacting and the forces of greed, of uh, business, uh, international ideas about communism or capitalism or whatever, these ideas tend to clash in an interesting way on this island and within this language. And I've found out that uh, sometimes I feel, you know, I should be in New York to be where the big ideas are happening. But then we had like the, the sixth biggest bankruptcy in capitalist history, so you know, we can understand that by being here. I consider myself quite quite lucky because I came along and I started writing in the early 90s and uh, then they started putting more money into funds for, for writers because since 1990 we've had 1312 novels translated into our other languages so it's quite a lot so we have a whole generation maybe two or three generations by now of writers who are professionally really committed to this craft and and we can see the results. I think the reason Icelandic literature survived throughout the centuries and why we have such a great cultural scene in Iceland today is due to the openness of Icelandic culture. We have always been ready to embrace influence from abroad. To my knowledge, uh, Icelandic is the only language that uses the same word to to say home and the world, heima and heimer. And it means that everywhere is our home. And it also means that we are all made of such stuff as our dreams.